Professor Stephen Saber, thank you for coming to UNC Chapel Hill today. You are an expert on German affairs, German foreign policy, European security, transatlantic relations. How are the Germans doing in foreign policy? Are they having a strong international profile yet again, or how are they playing the international scene? I think they're still learning to become leaders again. They've been uh, sort of in the background for many years, or have been allies, but not actual leaders. They've been, they've immersed themselves in the European system, and now they're being forced by a number of factors to become leaders again. I think they're doing well. I think they are the best positioned country in Europe to be a leader because they have a consensual approach generally to foreign policy and domestic politics. They still are very pro-European. They know the limits of their power. Uh, I think what they have to learn is to think a little bit more beyond their own national interests and think in terms of what a, a, a leader has to think about in terms of public goods and broader uh, strategic interests. And, but, the, but they're learning and it takes time. They don't just learn it overnight. Yeah, thank you. German-American relations have recently been in crisis. The espionage, the listening cri uh, crisis and various international issues. Uh, the United States and Germany didn't see eye to eye. So how are transatlantic relations doing? It's an interesting story, but it's really more a problem with Germany than with the United States. I think the, the American image of Germany is pretty positive. Uh, in, to the extent the Americans are thinking about Germany, they have good images of the Germans. There's a lot of respect for German economic success and for its role in leading Europe and so on, and Russia, especially Russia policy. I think on the German side, it's more a question of, under, of the Americans not really taking them seriously, understanding their interests, and also understanding that they are now in a much more important leading position and are, have to be a partner and not simply a, a secondary ally. I think that's part of the issue. There's a sense of, among Germans that we are now fully sovereign, we're an important country, we have important responsibilities, and we should be treated that way. And the Americans still have to learn that. I think they're still a little bit slow on that. Okay. And uh, do you think that it's something like German anti-Americanism, which is almost inherent in the structure of German society? Well, I, I mean, there's, there's been a long history of, of anti-Americanism, so there's something there for sure. There's different forms of it, uh, but I think most of the current dis uh, this sort of estrangement really comes more from disillusionment with the United States to some extent, uh, and with the same, same kind of debates the Americans are having about what's the balance between security uh, and uh, privacy and civil liberties, and I think the, the Germans have a right to be critical. There's a lot that the Americans have done in the last 10 or 15 years that have that deserve criticism. So it's hard to decide how much of it's just legitimate criticism, how much of it is a deeper sort of anti-Americanism. I don't think the anti-Americanism in Germany is really that deep. It could be deeper. I've seen it deeper in other European countries than I have in Germany. Okay, thank you. Um, Angela Merkel's term has been much preoccupied in foreign policy with Vladimir Putin, the Russian president. Uh, Angela Merkel grew up in East Germany. She speaks uh, Russian fluently, so she is culturally quite aware of Russia as a country, as a culture, uh, as an important factor. Does that mean she's actually more pro-Russian because of her upbringing and her past, or is she actually more anti-Russian because of that? I don't think she's either. I think she understands Russia pretty well. I mean, she speaks fluent Russian. She even won a prize for her Russian. I think she, uh, but she also understands uh, the kind of leader, or the kind of Russia that Putin is creating which resembles a little bit the East Germany that she grew up in. I think she has higher uh, expectations for Russia. I think she's very disappointed that uh, Putin has turned out to be the kind of leader he has. I think, But she has, like all Germans, a long-term view. She doesn't think about Russia as only Putin or only over the next three or four years. Germans think 10, 20, 30, 50 years. I think she's thinking the long term. And in the long term, I think she thinks that Germany and Russia will be able to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You've said um, previously that German foreign policy under Angela Merkel is still dominated by the impact of Ostpolitik, that strategy of rapprochement with the East. Would you, do you still think so, and what do we mean by that? Well, it's, it's a good point, because I think there's a lot of discussion now about whether this is still a viable approach anymore, given the fact that it looks as if Russia is not interested in cooperating, and we're going back to some sort of version of the Cold War. But I do think the German uh, approach to, not just to Russia, but to Iran, to China, uh, to even Syria, would always be, let's try to find diplomatic ways of dealing with the situation, let's try to engage, let's try to create networks and relationships, and let's not try to, uh, if we can, let's avoid confrontation. They'll still try to do that with Russia, 
They're still trying to talk to Russia, even though Putin is not really looked at as very trustworthy. Uh, but they also, as they did in the Cold War, if necessary, uh, they can always rely on, you know, on being, on having the military uh, power behind them, and if they have to, they go in that direction with NATO. When we look at the recent crisis which has engulfed Europe, the refugee crisis, the Greek economic crisis, um, then maybe relations with the United States, certainly relations with Russia and Putin, Germany has always been right at the center. Because well, obviously one reason being it's been the largest country on the continent. But does it mean that Germany is increasingly becoming rather unpopular and will have to face and deal with uh, criticism and probably the accusation of a new German Reich will be just around the corner. So uh, is that going to be expected and how, how uh, 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 are the Germans going to deal with that? Yeah, I think that there, there is a sense that uh, when you start, that Germany has to lead more now because uh, the other countries around it can't lead and the United States is playing less of a role in Europe. So I think there is a sense that Germany understands it has to take the lead on something like the Eurozone crisis or Russia because if they don't take it, nothing will get done. On the other hand, once you lead, you're going to create antagonisms and people who don't agree with you. Uh, I do think that, and the Germans are particularly aware of the, the concern of having encircling alliances against them in, in Europe because of their power, but I think at the end of the day, the fact that Germany is a, a stable democracy, that it's still a very pro-European country, and that it has a very consensus-oriented approach will moderate that, uh, that antagonism. The Germans, of course, have a lot of experience of dealing with and within the EU, dealing also with Russia. But what about China, that up-and-coming superpower? Is there much experience regarding China available in uh, Germany and within the Merkel government, or the Germans are still finding their way how to do that? I think the, the expertise is with, with business. I mean, Germany import, exports a great deal to China. It, it, one half of all European Union exports to China are German. So the Germans have a big stake in economically, but I agree with you that they don't have the expertise, either in the universities or in the government, uh, in terms of foreign policy to deal with China. This will have to develop because German interests are clearly going to be pulling it into a closer relationship with China economically, and as a result, they're going to have to understand China better than they do today. Thank you. And of course, German foreign policy all seems to be about Angela Merkel, but the foreign minister actually is an SPD man, Steinmeier. Right. So where is he? Does the SPD and Steinmeier have disappeared, or are they actually participating in shaping German foreign policy? Well, it looks as if on the major issues, particularly Russia and the Euro, and the Eurozone issues, uh, and even the relationship with the United States, it's really done by the Chancellor and by the Chancellor's office. And the Foreign Ministry has been uh, played a much lo less important role than it did when Steinmeier was Foreign Minister the first time around. That has to do to part with the fact that his party is much smaller now than it was when he was in the first Grand Coalition. It also has to do with the fact that Angela Merkel is no longer a neophyte in foreign policy. She's quite an expert. She's been dealing with it for years now. She knows everybody. She has a great deal of confidence in her judgment. Uh, so that, I think the, the downside is that the Chancellor's office, the staff there, is much smaller than, say, the White House National Security Council. There's less than 100 people, I think, working in the Chancellor's office. So how do you manage all of these complicated issues with a very small staff? This is a real challenge, I think, for her. Mm -hmm. That means uh, Steinmeier must be quite frustrated in his role. I have to ask him. <laughs> I would guess he probably is. I mean, because he was used to playing a much more important role the first time around. Um, but he's been a good team player. He's not showing, not showing it publicly anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you expect a rejuvenation of the SPD? Will the SPD come back and play a bigger role in German politics again? I don't think so. I think you know, it's, it's amazing. They used to be the. There were two major Volksparteien, two major parties in Germany, the CDU, the CSU, and the SPD, and I think the SPD now is on the fringe of being a small party. I mean, I'm not sure the division between East and West, the left party, um, all of the, the, the fact that the SPD cannot really appeal to younger Germans very effectively anymore, yeah, they don't have strong leadership. I, 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 I don't think that they really have very good prospects right now. What are your, uh, what are your expectations for how German foreign policy is going to shape up in the next five to ten years? Well, I think they're going to. I think it will be one of these uh, situations, particularly with the U.S., where the U.S. will agree with Germany 
sometimes will disagree with Germany, other times they'll have to continue to have a good working relationship. I don't think it will be as close as it was during the Cold War because it's a very different relationship now. The strategic environment is very different. And I think Germany will, will continue to use its European base to project its influence. Um, but it will be more willing to use, uh, to be a bad guy if you want to use it, to use uh, economic instruments to, for its political ends. One example is the recent immigration crisis. They're now willing to tell the East Europeans, if you don't take immigrants, you're going to pay an economic price. And same with the Greeks. So I do, you do see this sort of harder edge coming in, and I think that's necessary to leadership. Mm -hmm. But it will still be a foreign policy which will be d dominated by economic thinking, by trade uh, thinking, rather than by also military means and... I think it will be, yes, dominated by economic thinking, but it will be an economic thinking that will have to think also in strategic terms, and I think the Germans will look at relationships as being strategic but being based on economic relationships more than on military relationships. They look at countries like Russia, even the United States, France, and Britain that have put up, based a lot of their power on military and it hasn't really gotten very much. So the German contribution to NATO and to other Western, uh, Western defense issues will remain relatively limited? Is, as long as the strategic environment around Germany doesn't deteriorate rapidly, I don't think I would see much change coming. Professor Stephen Sagel, thank you very much for your insights. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.